What's going on guys? Sitting in front of me is a beautiful permit. Looks like a giant pompano, right? We caught this guy in the Florida Keys doing some bridge fishing. I'm gonna show you how we caught it, I'm gonna clean it up, and then we're gonna cook it up into a great meal. But naturally, it's all, all right, good. here's the situation. Every time Dude, don't run this guy over. Juno Ryan goes to the keys. We either sleep in too long, there's no bait, the water's dirty, the permit don't exist. Well, That's guess true what? too. We've gone to three different tackle shops, yep. tried to catch pinfish, have called every oh. single tackle <laughs> yeah. shop in the keys. I just want to catch a freaking giant black grouper. I just want to catch Eat it. a keeper black grouper. No, you want to catch a nurse shark. That's what you came here for. Go get our pinfish. We're gonna fish until the tide switches, the end of incoming, then we're gonna make a switch to long key, and then we're gonna try to catch some sharks and some muttons. Drove so far, but lower keys tackle had the plug. And some of the nicest staff I've ever seen in a tackle shop. Yeah, it's actually, we, we're, very kind, rare. we're kind of weird, especially in the Keys, everyone's like really mean, like all the everywhere they, you go. They <laughs> act like they've never seen a tourist before and they act like they're annoyed by everyone, but it's like, hey man, it's your job, this is what yeah. you sign and, up and for. And you work in a service industry, so. <laughs> okay, here we go. Just dropped a pinfish on one rod over there and one rod over there. And Victor also dropped a pinfish over there. I got a little, uh, it's a two ounce egg. I'm fishing actually like 20 pound mainline mono on this reel just because we're fishing around a bunch of structure structure is not friendly to your braid it breaks braid mono is a lot thicker so it gives you a little bit more abrasion resistance gives you some resistance to breaking off 40 pound fluorocarbon leader 3-0 must add hook and we got the freaking shrimp that's also been bred with a lobster it looks like boom yeah, freaking lobster. We're ready to go. I'm on. Oh! Whoa! Uh, in my bag. Oh my god, guys, this is a big fish. Nah, put it on one. This thing just took off, got a nice run. There's a lot of current here, so even smaller fish still feel pretty big, but he ain't quitting. I'm guessing it's yellow jack. That's what Victor normally catches here. Victor and uh, Chad going fishing. I'm gonna have to change angles here. I just wanna keep him in between these two pilings as he fights. I think that's gonna be a regular jack. Try not to uh, rub my line on anything. Why? You think it's fighting harder than the yellow jack? Yeah. It's gonna get eaten by a glide group or a shark. Or you got a permit or something. Is my GoPro recording? Dude, this thing's big. Yeah. Dude, it's, it's a permit. permit. It's a permit. It's a permit. Hold on, I gotta get the net, right? I got it. Well, now I started sweating and freaking out. Oh, thanks. Can I go for recording? Yes. Damn, dude, that's sick. Hell yeah, Ryan. I'm gonna wait until you get him straight up and down. You got him. You gotta get him in that thing. In that eddy. That's a good one. That's a permit. A permit, yeah. Dude, you the man! Drop it, drop it, drop it. Yeah, bro! <laughs> you know how many That's freaking trips, epic. 
We've come down here with all these live crabs. Woo! We catch one on a freaking shrimp. Dude, hell yeah! <laughs> Oh, wow! Are they in season still? Yeah! Dude! Yeah! Victor and I have come on so many trips trying to catch these things. Bought so many crabs, spent so many hours sitting on the bridge, and it's the times that you don't expect that you're gonna catch them. This guy just munched that big old live shrimp. First shrimp of the day, crushed it. He's gonna come home for dinner. These things are really good, and especially this size. What do you say, like 12, 15 pounds? Oh yeah, beautiful yeah. fish. This size is a great eater. Absolutely love these things. Super strong and man, I'm stoked. This is this is well worth the drive down here to the beautiful Lee Cloudy in Florida Keys. You know it, that's not a yellow jack. Dude, this thing is pissed. It has Damn. to stop moving, bro. I'm like, I'm trying because I feel it rubbing on the underside of the bridge. It's, there's so much line out that way. Oh See if God. you can do two permanent in one day. I haven't turned it, bro. Dude! This thing's huge! What would Chad gone fishing do? Oh my god, Chad, he'd be saying, yeah, buddy. I like maybe gained line back for like three cranks and then it just kept going. This thing is big. I'm just rubbing the underside of the, oh, there it goes. No. no. how far he was. Yeah. He's still reeling. And still reeling. And still reeling. Well. I guess we'll never know. Hmm. I don't know. Broke it maybe where my leader knot was. Possibly. That's uh, definitely going to have some frays in my line because I was rubbing up all underneath the other side of the bridge. But <laughs> There's critters out here. Some mystery critters for sure. So these Keys bridges, they're they're pretty long. Um, just walking out with all of our gear to this one spot, it's, it's about a half hour walk with all of our stuff. But a lot of times you might forget something in the truck, need to go to the bathroom, or you wanna go fish a different part of the bridge like I'm doing right now. I'd say bringing wheels has been probably one of the best decisions I've ever made coming out here. <laughs> Cause it's just, this, Walking up and down this thing could absolutely drain the life out of you and drain the want to keep fishing, man. That's it. Just gotta put myself in the best situation to just want to keep casting. Got him on. Oh, it's taking me down the bridge. Yellow Jack. That's your first Keys Bridge Yellow Jack, isn't it? Nah, we caught a bunch of, I caught them on the Voodoo with you guys last time. Oh yeah. I released them all and Victor was really mad at me. <laughs> so I was throwing them back. It's like, dude, I was gonna eat those. These guys, I may sound like a broken record if you guys watch Victor's videos, but if you happen to just watch mine, they are highly underrated, unregulated fish, very, very good eating. They look like a Jack Crevel, but they do not have a really similar meat to them at all. Much firmer, much whiter, doesn't have the thick blood line that a Jack Crevel has. So, unregulated, no size limits. This guy's big enough for a meal, so we're gonna take him home. 
you what do we got? Recording. I don't know what kind of species we got here. Oh, Victor, when you see what this is, is bro. It when you see what this is, bro. What is it? It's a baby black. Oh, nice. <laughs> Look at this thing. That's pretty cool. Look at the shrimp. Alive shrimp. Look at how adorable that guy is. If only he were about like, I don't know, five times this size, that'd be pretty sweet. But regardless, that's another species for the day. So you know what? We'll take it. He's not gut hooked, so he's gonna live to grow up to be big and strong, and hopefully we'll come back and catch him one day. I got nothing. I'm getting camera shy, so I'm just gonna let this pretty little guy go. See ya. You gotta know when to hold him, when to fold him, when we to are, walk away. We're folding him and yeah. we're walking away. Yeah, we're definitely walking away. You know when to fold him when I just reeled up a shrimp, a live shrimp, on both sides that have been out for what, like 30 minutes? Yeah, now? whole live shrimp Untouched. and nothing ate them. And that's, that's weird. That is super weird. So it's time for us to go. Absolutely. So this is the third permit that I've ever cleaned in my entire life. And permit, I think, are probably the most difficult fish I've ever had to clean. That's really because they have these giant, really huge ribs and pin bones. So they're, pin, they're bones that run this way, outside, like their peck fin. They're super thick, so they're a big pain to work through. So we're going to give this my best shot, and we'll see what we can do. Working with an 8-inch Dexter Narrow Filet. It's one of uh, Victor's sponsors. He's a huge fan of these, so I'm a huge fan of them. Working around, trying to feel where the permit is soft. So just feeling with my fingers. Starts right about there. There's no perfect way to do it. And I'm just gonna follow down the fish. Not getting too close to the peck fin because there's just a lot of bones and mass here. Working, working, working. That was all dense. I couldn't get my knife through that. Then I'll just bring it right back down to here just for my initial cut. Turn the fish towards me and I'm just gonna start my normal outline like on any other fish. I'm actually gonna switch to a shorter knife for these initial cuts. I kinda like that a little bit better. If you try and get really, if you try and get way too close to the spine and too close to these fins, you end up cutting through to the other side. So I leave a little bit of a gap. I'm just gonna start following that down and separating this big old slab of meat from the main part of the fish. I really try and take my time with these larger fish like this because I know I'm not perfect at foying and I don't need to be perfect at it. And we're not in any time rush. We're not, we're not in a time crunch. Give this fish the respect that it deserves. Yeah. Since we had it on ice, yeah, since we had it on ice for a while, it's hugely important to improve your ability to fillet because it keeps the fish really, really firm. So since this is such a big, tall fish, as opposed to trying to hop over the backbone from the top, I'm gonna outline the bottom as well and work my way back up to the spine. So just here. Outline. Victor yelled at me because he said I was gonna cut myself, so I'm really trying <laughs> to be self-conscious of where my hands are now. It's okay. I appreciate you, bro. Very dad, dad-like. Nice. This is actually coming really nicely. And separating off. There we go. Go with a cut right there. We've got ourselves up over the rib cage now. And I'm going to continue to separate the filet from here. Just slowly working my way back. Now these thicker pin bones are starting to come free because we got it separated here. So take your time up in this area in order to preserve as much as you can. Beautiful. The permit are definitely unique in the fact that we're actually getting, look at all this meat that we're yeah. getting on this side. Normally you have to cut out the whole rib cage in order to get that, but look at all that. That's going to be some goodness. Just like any crustacean eating fish or snapper grouper, they always have a big rib cage. Nice. Bam. Good job. Big old pompano. 
So we, we got this big old red bloodline and it's even denser, it's even taller, I guess you could say, on the opposite side. So I'm gonna be pretty liberal with this cut I'm about to make. Cut right here and I'm gonna leave maybe three quarters of an inch all the way down. I'm trying to break all the way through the meat, all the way through the skin. There's that. And then the same thing on this side. This is all gonna be catfish food. So there's no shortage of those here. Oh, a Cuda got it. Dude, that's a nice Cuda. Yeah, that's Cuda a got nice it. Canal canoe, Cuda. I want you guys to look at this fillet from this angle. So when I'm skinning it, I'm gonna leave a decent amount of meat on the skin to get rid of that red, really, really potent flavor. It may seem like I'm missing significant amount of meat. Realistically, I would just end up cutting it away later in the kitchen when I was making my fine cut. So I'm just gonna make take care of it right now. Start here, give myself a little, little something to grab onto. Work my way down the filet. What do you say, Vic, long strokes for it? Yes no sawing. I'm going to use the full length of the blade. Ah, well I'm not doing that. I'll try and do better next time. So I left a little skin on right there, but you can see all that dark nastiness. That's not what we wanted. So we removed that right now the easy way. The crew are going to get this piece. I think he feels us watching him now. Oh. No, he got it. He got it. He's not even that big and he's devoured it. Oh. We'll chop this up into some finer pieces and I'll see you guys in the kitchen. We are in the kitchen. We've been busy prepping, been chopping a bunch of goodness up. And the recipe that we're making today is one that Victor has made a couple times before. I'm putting a different twist on it, but I've never been here to enjoy it. I've just been watching Victor's video, seeing him make these wonderful meals. So it's a poached permit, essentially. Basically, the fish is gonna be cooking in a bunch of wonderful juices. First starting out, we're just going to Get some onions browned up. So I've got a hot pan, some olive oil, pans on medium, a little bit over. Smoking is not exactly what we wanted, but the onions will cool the pan off just a little bit. So I'm gonna let these guys get till they're kind of a little bit more golden. Sweeten them up just a little bit so they don't have that oniony bite. Then I'm gonna start adding all of these other ingredients over here. Some garlic, then tomatoes, allow those to cook down. And we're, lastly, we're gonna add our fish. Pretty simple seasoning. We're just gonna go with some pepper, salt, garlic powder, and some paprika. I'm really happy Brooke's not here because Brooke usually roasts Victor on how he seasons his fish, <laughs> so she'd definitely be roasting me. Brooke, come out of the woodworks, where are you? Add some of that yellow pepper. Now I'm gonna add chopped garlic. That's about a little bit more than half a head of garlic. Let that cook down. Oh, I can smell it. Can you smell it, man? Mm -hmm. Hope you guys can smell it through the camera. Ladies, he can open a bottle of wine without breaking the cork. Didn't know I was being filmed. But next ingredient, we're gonna add some white wine, half a cup or so. Victor's gonna tell me when, because he's cooking wine a little bit more than me. Like that, when? thinking like that. What, what, is what, what does white wine do when well, you're cooking down with it? I just know it's in recipes. Any, any liquid, when you deglaze the pan, you're getting all the brown bits off of it. And something like wine, will get sweeter as the alcohol cooks out. So you're developing the sugars in the alcohol. That alcohol is turning into a, a sweet flavor 
and if you use too much or you don't let it reduce enough then you're just gonna taste wine or beer same thing with beer or same thing with anything acidic like lime juice or lemon juice you gotta let it kind of cook out and get I think that's a big difference when it comes to people like me who just cook we follow the directions and you know like you follow the directions and it makes a great meal but knowing the intricacies of why it's doing what it's doing that's how you get creative like this guy and that's why he started to learn to like venture out of his comfort zone and actually just start doing things yeah and that's the same thing with fishing people yeah. say how do you get good at fishing you learn and you build upon you build upon your knowledge and that's the same thing with anything in life right last ingredient pre-fish I'm gonna add some chicken stock just for some more juice. All right, in the moment we've all been waiting for. Add our seasoned pieces of fish. These shouldn't take very long, maybe a total of five, six minutes in here. The very last thing I'm gonna do is add some beautiful basil from Brooks Garden. So I'm gonna chop this up and it'll be the last ingredient. piece of fish on here get some of that juice all like that then Brooke finishing touch how much do you want what are you imagining just like that perfect Ta-da! Thank you, Ryan, for shot. cooking us a wonderful lunch. Hey, thanks for the good idea. I get that from watching all your guys' videos. Loyal subscriber, got the bell clicked and everything. First bite. Is it missing coconut milk? No. That's my it's, question. It's not missing anything. It's good. Mm-hmm. All right. This is definitely one of the ways to do permit. Oh yeah. Because it definitely, you can still feel even at cooking it it's, in the juice, it's still really, really firm. It's right. very firm. So if you grill it, it'd be too tough, I think. I think the majority of people out there have probably never had permit, but permit, mm -hmm. out of the two toughest fish I've ever eaten personally, permit and sailfish are up there. Not to say they're bad, they're delicious. They're just really tough, so easy to overcook. So mm -hmm. coaching is definitely the way to go, but it's good, the flavor is good. Sauce is good, but do you okay. like it? Oh, I 100% like it. I'm starving though, I just realized. As soon as I took a bite, I was like, wow, all food tastes amazing. Anyways, guys, I wanna thank you all so much for watching. If you like this type of video, be sure to check these two out. If for whatever reason you don't already know them, Brook Chris Outdoors, Land Shark Outdoors, wonderful people, a lot of fun to fish Aww. around, a lot of fun to cook with. Thanks, so. Ryan. Appreciate you guys. See you in the next video. Bye. Woo. This man wanted to be interviewed. Uh, That's how you know. Yeah, That's how you know it's good to the very last bite.